Hey guys, welcome back to Release the Craft in. Priscilla here with another episode of Storycraft. And right now we are three weeks into a month of cat tales. Or cat themed fairy tales, however you prefer it. Um, and you guys, <laughs> I have to say, this month is flying by and I'm absolutely amazed at how quick it's going. But I'm also very excited to have another cat story to tell you guys today. So before I jump into it, um, I just want you to let you guys know that I will be working on some viewer requests next month. So if you have a request that you would like to hear on this uh, segment of my channel, uh, leave it in the comments below. I absolutely do accept a uh, viewer request for stories that you wanna hear, and I love to tell the stories that you guys want to hear. So leave those in the comments below. I will try to do as many as I can next month. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna jump into it. Today's tale of cat glory is the tale of Kisa the cat. And this tale comes to us from Iceland. Um, it was originally, words are really hard. It was originally collected in the even harder word, because I did not look up pronunciations for this. That would be something prepared people do. Um, so Icelandic people, uh, in advance, sorry, this is butchery. Um, it was originally collected in the Neuslandischen Volksmarchen, um, and then Andrew Lang later on adapted it into his Brown Fairy book. So this is where I originally encountered this story, was in the Brown Fairy book by Andrew Lang. Yes, I know it's another Andrew Lang tale, but you guys, um, his books are amazing and they are like a great anthology of different stories from around the world. So this is how I came across it. This is what we're telling. I'm telling his version because um, I don't have access to the original version and I probably wouldn't be able to read it anyways. I don't speak Icelandic. Clearly. <laughs> so we are going to jump right into it. This is the tale of Kisa the Cat, and it begins where all stories begin. Once upon a time, there was a queen who had a smoke gray cat with eyes that were as blue as the finest china, and this cat followed her everywhere. And I am particularly fond of this cat already, one sentence into the story, because this is how my cat looks like. Um, she's not the mascot of the channel. You will never see Nico up here. Um, and if you do, it'll be like something dramatic has happened because she's not a social cat <laughs> whatsoever. But she is a little gray cat with very shiny, pretty greenish eyes. Um, not quite blue, but I love her. <laughs> and um, I love this cat because it reminds me of her. So already, Kisa is a winner. Uh, this cat is a winner. This cat is not Kisa. <laughs> But this cat is a winner. And it's the queen's cat. And she absolutely loves this cat. This cat follows her everywhere. It goes on chariot rides with her or carriage rides. It goes from room to room with her. Spends time in the library with her. When she's, I don't know, playing croquet with her ladies or whatever queens do in the daytime. I don't know. Embroidery? I think medievally queens do a lot of embroidery. Um, she's there for it, though. This cat and her are besties. And um, in addition to having this cat, this cat also had her own little kitten. Kisa. <laughs> and, um, you know, this little kitten followed her mom everywhere. Her mom followed the queen everywhere. And the queen absolutely loved this dynamic, um, except for the fact that, you know, she would constantly lament to her cat about how her whole life is perfect because she's obviously living the best life she possibly can. She's the freaking queen. So she wants for nothing except for the one thing they always want for which is a little baby. Except she doesn't say she wants a baby. She laments that she doesn't have a kitten of her own like her cat has. Which, interesting choice of words. Um, if this is a genie situation, you would have just ended up with a cat. But this isn't a genie because this cat is not a genie. Uh, but the cat listens to her, uh, her bestie, the queen, talking about how much she wishes she had her own child. And she's like, say less. I will go figure this out myself. And I will help you because... One, it's really weird that you keep talking about wanting to have your own kitten when my kitten is right here. Makes me a little bit skeeved. But two, I love the shit out of you and you definitely deserve to have your own child. So let's let's work this out. So the cat goes off into the woods and she just happens upon some fairies there. She talks to them out there and she's like, hey, can you do this for my girl? And they say, yeah, we totally can do that. In fact, we love the queen. Her and the king are really great. Um, we're more than happy to help them with this. And tell them not to worry about it. So the cat goes back to the castle and she tells the queen, everything is taken care of, rest assured it will happen. And sure enough, 
the queen gets pregnant, and nine months later, she has a beautiful baby girl who uh, looks like she's made of snow and sunbeams, and that's directly from the book. Um, I don't know what snow and sunbeams looks like, and I, I really, like, enjoy, but also, like, rue how fairy tales describe, like, people as being, you know, as black as a raven's wing, and, like, as red as blood, <gasps> and, you know, like, as white as snow, because, yes, I understand this, and I know that there's actually, like, um, some deeper lore behind it, and maybe I'll get into that one day, uh, maybe when we do Snow White, uh, but, like, the way that they describe like, children especially as being like this and this is is so irritating to me because in my brain I'm like, yes, I know that snow is white, so congratulations, you have a white child. I have, I've accomplished that by figuring out what country of origin the story came from. But also, like, what do sunbeams look like? Rays of light? Like, how does this child look like a ray of light? Somebody explain it to me. <laughs> Um, I just wish they were a little bit better at describing things. Like, a hair like a sunbeam would be a lot more clear to me than look like she was made of snow and sunbeams. And, um, mini rant over. That's just my mini aside. At any rate, this, uh, snow and sunbeam baby was perfect in every single way, except that she would not fall asleep unless the little kitten slept beside her. And this was, like, dire, you guys. Like, she would cry and cry for hours and hours and hours until they put that kitten in her little crib with her. Then she'd go right off to sleep. So she was a totally perfect baby, except that she had a very unhealthy attachment to a kitten that she probably shouldn't have been sleeping with if I know anything about babies, which is nothing. I know nothing about babies, but I feel like they're not supposed to sleep with cats. At any rate, that's what they do. And when I think about it less objectively, very cute. So pause for cuteness. Unfortunately, though, um, as the year passed, the kitten became less of a kitten and more of a cat. And the baby stayed a baby because that's how biology works. And one night came when the maid came to put the kitten into the bed with the baby and realized that she was nowhere to be found. So she tells the queen, like, I don't know where this kitten is. I've been looking everywhere. The queen absolutely panics because she might actually have to mother her child or something. I don't know. I'm not judging her. I'm judging her a little bit, but I'm not judging her that much tiny bit um so she mobilizes every single person in the castle from like the foot servants to the cooks to the castle guard to search every single nook and cranny of this castle all the dark corners all the places they can think of they they have the little toys they're making the pss, pss, pss noise like all over the castle they can't find this kitten um she's just gone she's gone and they had to accept that um she probably just ran away <laughs> she was a cat now so she did what cats do and she took off when she didn't want to be there anymore and they really don't ask any more questions after this point um and something that like really bothers me about this story is that they don't ask her mom where she went <laughs> also her mom never comes back into the story um so i i don't know what happened <laughs> i'm gonna assume that the fae took her in exchange for the baby that she bartered for so that's the conclusion for the mom, and she's living her best life with fairies. Um, but the kitten is gone. The baby now has to sleep alone and, you know, maybe actually get held or something because there's no one to sleep with her, or at least no kitten to sleep with her. And um, eventually, I guess, they move on, and the, the little baby learns how to sleep on her own. Uh, because they don't talk about that again <laughs> either. <laughs> but some time passes, and the princess grows up into a beautiful little girl. And uh, one sunny day, she's outside playing with her ball in the garden, and she hears a voice coming from the rose bushes um, after she tosses a ball into them. And they say, I'm sorry, Iceland. Uh, Ingeborg, Ingeborg, have you forgotten me? It's me, Kisa, your sister. And this confused the princess because she couldn't remember ever having a sister her entire life. And she said, Who? <laughs> I'm sorry. And Kisa says, don't you remember how I slept beside you every single night? Have you no memory? Because Kisa couldn't understand how the princess um, had forgotten her when she remembered everything she's ever experienced as a kitten. So Kisa is the kitten, all grown up now. Now she's a cat. And she's sort of ruining the day that like humans forgot all of their childhood memories because... 
the princess has no memory of her. And the princess is so skeptical that she's like, if you're my sister, then why did you leave me? And at this point, uh, Inkaborg's maidservants all arrive, and they make such a fuss at the sight of this weird cat um, in the bushes that uh, Kisa runs off into the bushes. She just, like, nopes out of there. She's like, ah, fuck it, people. And in very cat fashion, she takes off, and she goes all the way back to the forest. And then the princess gets very frustrated at her ladies because they scared off her little bedfellow, and she was trying to get to the bottom of how she might possibly have a sister. And she stayed mad. She stayed real mad um all through the rest of the day until that night when the queen came took her in and she tells her about what she saw and the queen says kisa was telling you the truth she did used to sleep with you she was the daughter of my pet cat um who would sleep with you so you were in a way like sisters and um if she comes back then you need to bring her to see me because we know we've all been looking for her and we're very worried and um so the very next day the princess sets out she goes to the forest to play because you know she's on a mission um the mission is to see fairies it is not to find kisa she doesn't go out there to look for kisa which you think that's where she would be going but no that's not what she does um but she wants to see fairies and she wants to see them so bad that you know she's kind of keeping a lookout for her ladies and waiting um to see what they're up to and what they end up doing is making themselves comfortable having a little picnic set out and they fall asleep right next to the stream um because they don't really care what happens to children at this time this isn't a way way long ago guys so they fall asleep <laughs> And Ingeborg runs off to play wherever she wants because nobody's watching her and she can see that they aren't watching her. And when she's sure that she's, you know, at a distance where they won't notice her, she takes off into the woods and goes way off into the deep dark forest all by herself in the hopes of seeing some fairies or some brownies like way deep in the woods. She doesn't see any fairies. She never gets to see fairies. Um, but she does run into a giant, horrible giant who emerges from a cave as soon as she passes by it and then demands that she follows it. And she's just a little girl, so she doesn't know what else to do except for follow the giant, which she does. But then the giant has her march for a very long time, and she's a little girl, you guys. <laughs> so she gets tired. And when she gets tired, she starts to whine, and the whinier she gets... The more she starts to cry because she's just so miserable and like same girl same i would also be freaking miserable if somebody just marched me off on a pointless march into the woods for no reason other than the fact that i crossed their doorstep um but this goes on for a while so she starts crying and then the giant gets mad and he turns to her and he says i don't like girls who make loud noises and if you persist on crying then i'm going to give you a reason to cry um and, you know, he threatens her with his axe. She keeps crying because she's a child. And so um, his response is to cut off her feet. Which is extreme. And that's exactly what he does. He chops her feet off and he just leaves her there. Um, puts his feet, her feet, in his pocket and walks away. So the princess lays in the grass, writhing in pain, bawling her eyes out, just rolling around, having the ultimate fit, which totally justified, um, because she got her feet freaking chopped off, and she cries until her throat is super dry and super sore, and then she hears a noise, and at first she's a little scared, but then it sounds like wheels, so she starts to get her hopes up, like maybe this is somebody driving by and they can help me, and as she stares off into the distance, she sees a horse-drawn cart um, emerge from the tree line, and she's like, oh, thank God, maybe these people will save me, but I'm so desperate, and she tries to croak out a little cry for help, like, help, help me, please, but her throat is so dry because she was crying forever on the ground there, and when you know the cart starts to get closer she realizes that the cart is being driven by kisa the cat <laughs> she's driving a horse-drawn cart um and she's using her tail as a whip to spur on the horses faster and faster until she gets to the princess at which point she jumps off the cart she scoops up the princess and very gently puts her into a bed of straw in the back of the cart and then takes her just as quickly all the way back to her little hut because Kisa has a hut in the woods, you guys. No questions. Um, and she makes a little bed out of some cushions for the princess. And she gives her some milk to drink. And as the princess lays back, Kisa takes some dried herbs and some warm water. She mixes them up and applies them to her bleeding stumps. And um, all at once, the pain and the blood, like, has stopped. So 
at least we know the princess is no longer bleeding out from her foot wounds and she's not feeling any pain so like some solace also kisa's like a low-key witch in the woods and i love that um as soon as you know the princess calms down a bit you know now she's had some warm milk she's feeling great her feet aren't hurting her anymore because they're not there um Keitha tells her to take some rest. She's going to lock the door so she'll be safe. And, you know, as soon as she starts to turn around to go out of the house, the princess is already out. Like, she's out like a light. So Keitha gets back into her cart. She rides straight over to the house of the giant. She jumps out of the cart and she creeps around the giant's house so that she can hear him. And he's talking to his wife. And he's telling her, whenever I feel like it, wife, I'll go back and I'll kill that princess. Then everybody in the forest will know not to mess with me. The giant who kills small children. Like, it's hard. I mean, I'm sorry, but, like, you're a giant, dude. Like, is that an impressive task for a giant? I don't think so. I don't think so. But he thinks it is. And his wife is, like, hyping him up. She's like, absolutely. Nobody will talk shit about you anymore once you go back and kill this helpless, defenseless little girl. Um, Because you cut off her feet already. So, like there's no challenge but you're you're the best everyone's gonna know that you're the best when you do this and they just go on like this and then they start talking like mad shit about Ke uh about ingeborg like they just start talking mad 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 shit about her calling her all sorts of names making fun of her for being a crybaby which like was his wife there like i don't understand she's got a lot of a lot of hate in her heart for this little girl and they're so busy on this like hate train that they don't notice that Kisa has now officially stuck snuck into their house um snuck over by the stove poured an entire bag of salt into the pot that they have working by the fire and has snuck to a quiet dark place where they won't see her um so that as they're continuing to like hype each other up um and eat their dinner they continue to get thirstier and thirstier because every time they go back to the pot they refill their bowls and it's a very salty broth that they're like consuming and so they're just getting thirstier and thirstier and they're starting to complain about it and they're like oh i'm so thirsty like i could drink the desert dry I am so thirsty um and it gets to the point where like now they're just competing with each other to see who's thirstier and then they like they they put their money where their mouth is and they take off to go drink up the stream outside because that's how thirsty they're like they're gonna die if they don't get another drink so they're out there trying to drink an entire river and while they're out there um competing to drink up all the water in the river uh kisa starts to search the house until she finally founds like a small box in which the giant had put ingeborg's feet and i guess at some point he scooped up some magic grass and threw them in there so they wouldn't rot i'm guessing i don't know the properties of this magic grass but it's magical stay with me that's important um so she takes the feet in the little box um tosses them back into the cart i'm assuming gently and uh goes all the way back to her hut to where she finds ingeborg is actually awake because as soon as kisa left she woke up because she was so afraid that it was the giant who was going to come back for her first um which is so sad because she's a little girl <laughs> and uh when Kisa gets there, you know, she calms her down, she shows her the box, she shows her that her feet are in there, and she tells her, the giant kept these with magical grass, so your feet will be back on and they'll be just as fine as they were before in no time flat. So she takes two strands of the magical grass and uses them to tie her feet back onto her little leg stumps. And uh, she explains to the princess that she's going to have to stay off her feet for a week and be very good if she wants to walk again. Otherwise, her feet won't work because it's magic, but it's not like instantaneous um and when her feet heal she will take her back home in her cart and turns out ingeborg was in fact very good so kisa was able to take her home within the week um back to the queen and the king who's a non-character in this you guys um and they were so thrilled to have that, their daughter home that they told kisa she could have anything she wanted as a reward and she said we'll talk about it when the time comes jump back in her cart and just dips on out of there because cats you guys our work was done um and ingeborg was devastated when kisa left her because codependency does not stop even if you haven't seen that person for a few years i guess so like uh 
she's absolutely devastated. Her heart is totally broken. She's bereft with her guilt and like anxiety and depression and all the things because Keitha didn't stay with her. Um, she gets so depressed that she wouldn't eat and she wouldn't drink and she wouldn't even smile no matter how many gestures and performances and jokes and dad jokes, I'm guessing, were told to her. She would not smile and they were like, oh my god, our daughter is going to die because this cat's not around we don't know where this cat is so we can't like ask her to come back and um we don't want our child to die from grief uh you know because a cat left her so what can we do we've done everything we bought her all the things we bought her new dresses and toys and all sorts of stuff that didn't make her smile we brought her all sorts of foods and like yummy delights and desserts that didn't make her happy she won't even eat it like what can we do and the king is like what if she got married which like she's a child <laughs> but that was his suggestion and the queen was like it's going to have to be it. That's the only thing that's going to cheer her up. Nothing will make her happier than to get hitched. Because as we all know, marriage is the perfect solution for any problem. Clearly. <laughs> Fairy tales. Um, so, like, uh, the king, you know, departs to go round up all of the eligible princes in the land. Which took quite a bit of time. And by the time he gets back, you know... Our princess Ingeborg is a little bit older than she was when he left and she takes twice as long as it took the king to find everybody to decide who she's actually going to marry. So now she's a lot of bits older because it's my story, god damn it. <laughs> and um, she finally settles on a young prince who has eyes like the pools in the forest because it reminds her of the place where she was reunited with her friend Giza. And that's it that's all that happens she picks this prince they get married there's a big feast and at the end of the feast kisa appears before the princess and her new husband and the princess is so joyed she rushes forward she embraces her friend um and kisa says i have come for my reward and the princess says name it anything you want the best for you you can have all of my things i don't even care because i'm just so happy to see you again and kisa says tonight you must let me lay at the foot of your bed and the princess is a little confused. And then she's a lot of confused. And then she's like maximum confused. And she says, just ask for something else. That's so silly. I mean, of course you can sleep at the foot of my bed if that's what you want. You're my cat. Um, but I could give you anything else. And Keith says like, no, I don't want anything else. I want to sleep at the foot of your bed tonight. So the princess says, okay, I could do better though. And Kisa won't hear it. She doesn't want anything better. She just wants to sleep at the foot of the bed. And that's what happens. That night, the prince and the princess on their wedding night, um, fill in the gaps there, uh, let Kisa come join them in their bed. And she sleeps at the foot of the bed. The princess goes to sleep. And when she wakes up in the morning, um, imagine her surprise. She isn't waking up to her precious kitty cat. She's waking up to a whole woman. There is a beautiful princess sitting there on the end of her bed, just smiling at her. And when she speaks, it is with Kisa's voice. And she tells her, um, thank you so much for letting me sleep at the foot of your bed. Turns out um, my mother had been cursed uh, by another princess who was really jealous of her. And uh, she cursed her to stay as a cat until she could do a good deed. And I had to do the same in order for the spell to be broken. And apparently there's some caveat in there about how I had to sleep at the foot of your bed. Or I just added that in there because I'm a weirdo. Um, it's not like explicitly written that that was a requirement to break the curse. But I'm going to hope that it was. Otherwise she was just like, well now that you guys got married and it's your wedding night, I want to sleep at the foot of your bed. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> Um, but yes, now our cat Kisa is a princess and she stays uh, with the princess for quite a while and they are just as good of friends when they're two humans as they were when they were a human and a cat. In fact, probably even better because Kisa didn't just fuck off whenever she felt like she hung around for once. And eventually uh, Kisa gets married to a handsome prince of her own and they part but they stay forever friends and that is the end of the story everyone lives happily ever after and this was a really cute story I really love just like the imagery of this like cat 
um, not only going on this, like, heroic rescue mission and scooping up the princess and saving the day, um, the imagery of her whipping the horses with her tail, like, that tail has to be so long, but I just like the little idea of, like, a little spy kitty, like, sneaking into the giant's home and, like, Mission Impossible, like, dun dun dunning all over the place until she, like, finds the hidden feet. I just really like that, and I think it's a really cute, um, image and I think it's a really good like counterpoint to Puss in Boots a little bit um like Puss in Boots was very swarvy and like trickstery and then like Keith is very brave and clever um with the whole salt trick um so I think it's yeah I think it's a really cute story I really like how it came out I was like this is a wild ride I also um have some questions because I think maybe possibly what happened to her mom was that when she got the queen pregnant she turned back into a woman and just snuck away and left probably the same night that like Kisa also left um but she didn't take care of Kisa after that which like I don't, I don't know I don't know the dynamics but I like to think that maybe her mom turned into a human and disappeared before anyone could find out and Kisa was determined to stay with her friend even after she became a human so she um she set up this very convoluted plan so she could make that happen. Um, I'm still questioning why it had to be her wedding night. Because they did not say, like, also this, like, person you do a good deed for has to let you sleep at the foot of their bed. That's not a thing that they said. Otherwise, she could have done that immediately uh, when she brought the princess home. But she didn't. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about the story in the comments below. Um, this was a pretty fun one. We have uh, one more, I believe. I don't remember how many weeks April has. I think that's four. So I think we have one more cat tale to tell. And then that'll be the end of our cat month. I'm really enjoying these. These are really cute. I kind of want to make a stamp of these. Like some stamps. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I haven't decided. I think it would be fun to make um, like a line of cut stamp. Of at least one heroic kitty. Right? Yeah. I think so. Um, but that's going to be it for you guys. If you made it to the end of the video. I appreciate your faces. And I will catch you all in the next one. Till then. Happy crafting. Bye.